Hello Sentinels, has me here and tonight we will be talking about the forge and crafting in Babylon's Hole. A lot of you have reached out to me to make a video about crafting because ARPGs tend to have very grindy and unfriendly systems with leveling up your gear. And with that said, I think you will like this one. Let us start with crafting. The forge allows you to craft weapons and armor you have gathered blueprints for and the beautiful thing about it is that these items will be relative to your current power level that you're wearing. So before you craft it, it's a good idea to pick up your highest level items, even if they are bad, to get the best results. To craft items, you will need to first gather blueprints. These are dropped from completing special endgame missions, and each legendary item will have its own unique ability. You are also able to buy some starting blueprints from Pygmalion's market. For now, crafting seems pretty damn expensive, mostly materials-wise, and you wouldn't be able to craft them full sets willy-nilly. But they have a much more important role, called melding, but we will get to that later. The second feature you will have unlocked in the forge is recycling. This is pretty straightforward and doesn't need much introduction. You choose the items you don't need, and you basically disassemble them into crafting materials. It is free and doesn't cost you anything. For recycling, you will be able to use special consumable items, called catalysts. These stones will increase the amount of materials you get from recycling, and the higher the rarity of your catalyst, the more materials you receive. Also, if you want to disassemble higher rarity items, and you want more rewards from them, there are higher rarity catalysts that you require. So, for a legendary, you do need to use a legendary catalyst for maximum benefits. Keep in mind, these catalysts are pretty rare for now, so be careful with spending them. You can gather them from missions and orders, but you're also able to buy them from Pygmalion's market with a daily limit, so don't forget to buy these every single day. Next section is your Gideon Coffin. As you progress the main story, you will unlock your coffin that is a customizable item with a skill tree and a unique ability. You will have so-called crystals that you can change in the coffin that affects what skill tree and ability your coffin has, but you unlock these once you completed the main story. You will be able to change up your skill tree anytime in the forge for free and customize them to your builds without problem. You will have maximum of 20 points to spend, one per sentinel level, that is your character level. So don't worry about locking your character, you will be able to change these whenever you want, it has no locking or any penalty. Some of these crystals are faction specific on the other hand, so you might have to level up multiple characters if you prefer certain crystals and abilities. Moving on to the rebuild section, we have finally arrived to melding. As I mentioned earlier, crafting items is pretty useful, and the main reason for that is melding. Melding is a process where you can sacrifice any item you own, regardless of its rarity, and upgrading another item from the same category. So sword for a sword, and give it its power level for some money and crafting materials. Yes, you heard it right, you're able to level up any item you own and prefer as you play along without having to grind and farm the items you love again. You can just craft the maximum power level blue sword and meld it into a low level legendary sword you prefer and now you have a maximum level legendary sword. Neat, huh? The final section in forging for now is enhancing. Legendary and divine items, that is purple and orange items, will have special enhanced levels up to 10 with accessories having a maximum level of 3 for now. Through enhancing, you will be able to upgrade your favorite existing items and increase their stats and have a chance to level their innate enchantments to further levels, meaning those special abilities they possess can level up to next ranks. This is a fairly expensive process, even though it's simple, but it is recommended to keep this for your best equipment once you're at endgame. On March the 22nd, there will be a new forge mechanic announced called Refining, not much is known about this feature yet, but I expect it is going to allow players to change certain enchantments on your items, so the special abilities. But the developers already mentioned it will have restrictions to keep the game's balance and keep some incentive to grind for the best of the best items. And that is it for a quick overview of crafting in Babylon's Fall. It's pretty useful, isn't it? And I personally find it simple, so it's cool to see an action RPG allowing you to level up your favorite items instead of making them completely worthless in a few hours of leveling later. And this way, if you find a build that you enjoy, you can make sure it will be useful for the foreseeable future and keep having fun with them. Well, that is it for tonight, everyone. Thank you for watching, as always, and see you all the next time.